Conversation Pit. I'm so excited to be back for another session. This is session two of Conversation Pit. So um, if anybody caught up on last week, which I just posted yesterday, um, we kind of you know, spoke with a lot of creatives about some basics about what's going on in the creative industry right now, um, some issues that they're finding within the creative industry, and um, some resources that they would like access to within the creative industry. Um, so this week is going to run very similar to last week. Um, we kind of just want to chat with, you know, a different group of creatives and kind of get their feedback um, before we kind of move over to more niche oriented um, sessions next week. So um, make sure you all keep uh, in touch on our Instagram and stuff where we're going to be posting and kind of let us know what you do as a creative so that we can host sessions that are very um you know or very deep i'm sorry toured for you so we definitely want to make this your series and this is all about you and helping you guys so um starting next week we definitely will be you know kind of focusing on specific groups but this week we are going to be running something similar to last week so uh just to get started for everybody who's here if you could all just introduce yourself uh, one by one and kind of let us know what your name is and what you do within the creative industry right now uh, just a brief background about your creative journey at the moment <laughs> Okay, I guess I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but like, basically, I want to be a journalist, but I also want to be a photojournalist for travel, but I want to be a music journalist. And then I also want to do maybe photography, like landscape photography. I don't know. I just like really like anything in the creative field. So yeah. awesome. Uh, hi, my name's Megan. I'm a writer, uh, mostly, but I also have a lot of experience behind the camera. Um, a bit in front of, I did a lot of theater, but I'm transitioning into video now. So I um, did a web series pilot last year, and I wrote a feature recently. But what I'm looking for with Seda Collective is to connect with people who want to do like cool visual stuff um, and kind of tell a story visually, you know? So I'm down for like getting into photography as well and like really the composition meshed with like cool words <laughs> so that's what i'm looking for here awesome super cool I guess Tamira. I was... <laughs> oh, face. how are you <laughs> hey. hi you guys um my name is tamira um i am a stylist and the owner of a 90s inspired clothing brand um called new heritage i actually did an interview with sada so it's amazing <laughs> Um, but I'm basically looking to like just create with different creatives and to learn like um, each other's strengths and weaknesses and how we can basically help each other. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> Looks like I got three other people in here. Bianca. Hi, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. If I'm being honest, I really didn't know what this was and I kind of wanted to join just because I was like oh this is cool but I had no idea and I do not look good so I said let me not win the little video it's okay but, no. <laughs> but my, my name's Bianca um I'm an editorial writer right now um I just I used to write for ones to watch and lyrical lemonade and currently I'm writing for the wild honey pie and a smaller collective called worldwide waves um, right now I'm looking, I just started my own business. So looking to expand in that way. And I kind of just joined Seda Collective in this space. Cause I was like, it's been a minute since I've been like around other creative people or like even like obviously cause COVID, but even just like virtually. So I was like, let me see if I can just connect and see how everybody's doing and how they live in life and just, you know, shoot, shoot the shits a little bit, but <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, no, I do not look good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Looks like I have two more. So whichever one of you guys wants to go next. I can go next. Um, so hi, my name is Asia Ava. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, and um, a producer of my, like I produce myself and I make my own beats. I decided to join SADA um, Collective only because I wanted to talk and um, basically get connections as well. I think a big part of like independent artists, I think the most like um, difficult thing is about um, promoting yourself and getting around and being able to basically talk to other creatives to get an idea and um, get some tips from them as well. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you come to the right place. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> And it looks like I have one more person. Let me see. Slim Taylor. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. All right. So what's going on, everybody? Um, 
So you guys, I perform on the Slim Table. Would you call me Jeremiah? Um, I've been playing music for, God, probably more than 15 years now. Um, I'm starting to move into composing for films. So with the Sada Collective, I just kind of want to, you know, connect. Kind of, I've been locked in this quarantine like everyone else and kind of just wanted to check the status and make sure everyone's cool, still kind of creating, and, you know, still in the groove of things and not really, you know, losing their stride and all of it. So that's really about it. I love that. Awesome. And it looks like we just had someone else join. Matthew, how are you? <laughs> I, I'm well. I'm well. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Great. Yeah. Of course. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so we're just kind of all starting by kind of saying our name um, and then also letting everybody know what you're doing in the creative industry right now. Yeah, yeah you can go whenever. <laughs> you're my last one. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys. I'm Matthew. Um, it's nice to meet you guys. I uh, direct, write, and act. Um, I really want to check this out. Fossa from Sony uh, sent me the, the info and um, love to see what you guys are up to and seeing people thrive. Um, I'm actually going to a protest in a few minutes, but I really wanted to try to get in here and, and make an introduction. Oh, awesome. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate it. <laughs> Awesome. Perfect. Okay, guys. So, well, thank you all for introducing yourself. I'm really glad you guys are all here. Um, it seems like we have a really diverse uh, group of people today, which is really cool. Um, and I really like to kind of have, you know, creatives from different areas because I really feel like you guys can kind of help each other with different things that you guys are focusing on. So that's really awesome. Um, so just to get started, I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, as a creative in this industry, especially during this time, um, what are some gaps, I guess you would say that you have noticed within the, the creative industry as a whole? Um, and, um, what, I guess, recommendations do you have as a creative to either solve them or what are some resources that you would like to see maybe since you haven't necessarily, you know, figured out any recommendations. So what are some resources you would like to see in those areas um, available for creatives? Well, I don't really have a solution. <laughs> I have to run and grab a battery for my computer, but gaps, I mean, um, technically speaking right now, like, it's so, um, I work in entertainment marketing, like, my day job, and I've been furloughed, so, like, major productions are, like, mm -hmm. really halted with, like, as far as movie theater going, mm -hmm. so I think that's, like, it's such an amazing opportunity right now for people who are producing independently and just, mm -hmm. like, showcasing their things, like, doing things on much smaller budgets you know like I always like that <laughs> mm -hmm. and um that's always how I've done stuff like starting out you know like you just kind of make it happen and do it on your own and I think like this is an opportunity for those people to really thrive um definitely uh, awesome gonna, yeah I'm, I'm gonna Super be right cool. back after we get yeah back. no worries thank you for sharing <laughs> awesome who wants to go next It's a good question. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking hard. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Take your time. Yeah, and I'll just repeat the question just in case anybody like needs a repeat of it. Um, so I just asked, um, what are some prevalent gaps in the creative industry that you guys have noticed as creatives in this time and in this industry? Um, and what are, I guess, based off of that, some resources that you as a creative would like to see, um, like having access to, something that you would like to see available for you as a creative? Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, oh, <laughs> you can go. Okay. Um. So, I mean, one of the things like that that has been a gap is just like learning the virtual world. Period. Like, mm -hmm. especially as a creative, like, um, I mean, most creatives are kind of shy. So it's like when it's like you have to be the forefront of like virtually. It's kind of like hard because you're so used to being like just that person that you know maybe everyone knows maybe going out but mm -hmm. like so it's been like very hard to like express like you know your creativity so I think mm -hmm. like I think like this is definitely a perfect platform to like um have so that we can be able to talk and express you know the things that are going on you know mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, and, and I'd like to touch up on that too, because it's like, especially being a freelance artist or, you know, like an independent artist, it's, there's no guide to, you know, show us how we can go about 
becoming an artist because everything we do it ourselves you know everything's not free and when you if, no matter if you're a painter or a producer that makes beats like there's like I'm so thankful that we're you have something to where we can all come together and talk about each other's different platforms and because there's not a lot of places where many can go on and you know get guided the right way or get shown or told about different um ways of sharing their own creativity so i mean i would say like this is a great opportunity for all of us and just want to say thanks to that so there should be more out there you know that <laughs> we can get on. awesome i'm glad this is you know proving helpful for you guys and i really you know wanted to narrow in on this kind of idea just because as a creative myself i also noticed that that was a gap um especially during this time where we can't have you know events or anything where we can kind of be face to face and talking with each other um i really think it's really important that we're still able to connect and kind of talk about what we're working on and how our weeks went and you know all these things that you kind of are able to do in a normal you know time um and that are kind of like not available to us right now. So I definitely think it was really important to kind of be able to sit with other creatives and kind of chat and stuff. And I'm kind of going off of that, I guess, since you kind of talked about, um, you know, how you really enjoy this kind of, you know, collaboration aspect. Um, what would you, would you find something that's a little bit more niche to where you can, you know, speak with other creatives in your specific field um, helpful and kind of how would you like to see something like that being run? Um. I think like a app, like a app where like you can basically um, categorize the different creative creatives and like mm -hmm. maybe like do like a barter system or like some type of like collab together and like just you know create like so if I'm in fashion like someone can come into like the fashion category. And maybe like there's a photographer that needs um, mm -hmm. to update their portfolio where so, you know, it's it just all, you know, comes comes together. Like Yeah, so somewhere you can kind of find like people to collaborate with back and forth um, in all areas of what you're working on. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That especially well, like <laughs> sorry. Especially if you have like an app to where you can get like um when it's categorized you can find people around your community that way mm -hmm. it's easier and it could be like a one-on-one -on -one meeting or you know in in person I like having in-person meetings because I love to see the art in person and mm -hmm. that and it's and I I don't know about others but like when I'm there like present it mm -hmm. you know you can soak everything all in and it's just better you know visually so mm -hmm. definitely awesome or maybe you can even like make if people are un, like uncomfortable with like being in human contact or if they're like at risk for mm -hmm. COVID, then maybe you can make a website with like of your experience of somebody's art performance or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think um, in person interaction is really important. I feel like we've been kind of lacking in that area. And I feel like if we're, you know, a lot of restaurants are open and stuff. And I think if like events are thrown safely, I think it's definitely something that we should look into. And obviously with, you know, limited numbers and all of that, but just being able to kind of create um, a space where creatives can come and kind of you know chat with each other in person I think is really important because um, I feel like we're really missing out on that as much as we're grateful for the technology that we have and that we're able to connect in this way it's obviously not the same as like looking at a piece in real life or speaking with the artist in real life so um, I definitely think that's really important I'm um, a really great advice awesome and is yeah, I think having that, oh awesome sorry well, I think <laughs> having that trans, that's okay having that trans medium so because I know some people are going to be at home but to have that experience, whether that is if you have somebody who is across the medium that can develop a more interactive experience mm -hmm. that can that can be an accessory to because it sounds like if we're talking about a live event or something mm -hmm. like that, that mm -hmm. there can be uh, companion experiences along that and it can proliferate on social media. Definitely. And I know that, you know, that that's to have a presence everywhere is in it. And it feels like if this sounds sounds like a very diverse group of people who work in so many different things, and it's like, oh well, if there is somebody who can handle that front, that then you have a presence live, and you can have the organic connection as well as you know the ubiquitous online presence where it's going to blast out and get garner more interest to have more in person, mm -hmm. um, actual human to human contact, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is definitely being witnessed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm really stoked about the barter system idea because <laughs> mm -hmm. I really I do want to up definitely my photography portfolio and a bit of like my editing with video. So mm -hmm. I really I've seen a couple of fashion ads speaking on like Tamara. I know you 
have that 90s shop um like fashion moving picture like media stuff you know and I'd be really down for that and then if you just like have an idea we can collaborate on or talk about then like I could shoot it and edit it and then like mm-hmm. we both went <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, models are expensive <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I know. I know so many actors who want to be in front of a camera right now. And obviously, you know, if there's certain steps that are taken in order to have them feel comfortable mm-hmm. or, or whomever, but that mm-hmm. barter system works out because obviously people are mm-hmm. thirsty to 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 have material or to do mm-hmm. good work. And so that that is uh, that's such a great idea. Mm-hmm. Real quick to your previous point, I, I've been thinking about yeah. like the youth a lot, you know, and that like the 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 beginning of the pipeline of of the creative relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is not something that even j- just where the stop gap is, you know, that's something that I've been, I haven't even wrapped my mind around it, but I've, I've been concerned about like, how are kids going to develop a love for creating, you mm-hmm. know, when they don't even have, or yeah. even know that they have that, that, uh, mm-hmm. that ability. So to kind of be like, mm-hmm. Oh, here are some creatives who are young, who are doing it, you know, in their mm-hmm. twenties. And so, so that somebody who's 16, 15, 12, Tank can kind of be like, oh, that's dope, you know, mm-hmm, um, so mm-hmm. that they can still see that that's within grasp. And obviously they got mm-hmm. TikTok and all that shit, but like, mm-hmm. you know. Same. Yeah. Same, I agree, um, Matthew. Like one of the things that I've been doing cause my nieces, like they live in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So, and I live in LA. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been like talking to them through FaceTime, mm-hmm. but like two of them have like started like a little small business and it's so cute. And like, they've been asking me questions, like, you know, how they should you know do their websites. And like, so I'm able to like give them that feedback. So I think like, like a mentorship program would be like super cool. And um, like, also like I have, like I, I make my own shirts, like, so I have my press machine. So I have been interested in like, helping like the youth like start their clothing lines and stuff like that with just Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think that's a really interesting point too because you know even before COVID and everything I'm sure you guys you know are aware of the fact that like there are a lot of like smaller you know like uh, elementary schools middle schools and stuff that don't even have art programs in general um and I think it's really important as well to kind of you know be teaching the younger generation stuff because like when we're gone and we don't have like we're not here you know what I mean that's who's going to kind of take over in our spot and I think that you know having a space kind of um, to kind of do something like that would be awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys all know, we are having our app launch soon um, for creatives only, which is really exciting. And a lot of these things that you guys are all talking about are actually going to be features of the app, which is awesome. But I really love hearing everything else that isn't going to be included. And we can definitely take that into consideration um, and kind of incorporate that because we want this to be your guys' space and your guys' kind of place to kind of connect with each other and kind of, you know, collaborate and have just a space to kind of call home. Um, for all of your creative needs. So um, I really love hearing all these, um, you know, different things that you guys have to say. And I really think that this youth um, kind of aspect is definitely really important in terms of kind of getting, you know, having an education space where younger creatives can kind of come and learn from people who are not much older, but kind of, you know, working in the field right now and kind of get some feedback. And, you know, I think it's really important to kind of push those generations to kind of have, you know, knowledge in that area. Cause you know, a lot of the times through like school and stuff, they're not being told, you know, taught or told that, creativity is important and like I'm sure like you know I talk with so many of my creatives right now about the fact that like creativity just is everything you know what I mean like we wouldn't be able to do 99.9 percent of the things that we do every day without a creative mind behind it so it's definitely really important to kind of have um you know to kind of teach the younger generation that that is true and to kind of teach them you know how to how to kind of use that part of their brain because um we'll definitely lose out if that's not the case so awesome Thank you guys so much. And does anybody have anything else to say regarding what we've been talking about? Or can I well, move on to so like add on yeah, to Matthew's ahead. point? Well, I have like another thing and to add on to Matthew's go point. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mm-hmm. think it's really important to get like make the younger generation, even though I'm like 21 and I'm still young, but like I mm-hmm. think it's really important to let the younger generations that are people of color know that mm-hmm. there's an option for them to be in the creative space because I know a lot of Asian people, since I'm half Asian, we don't think that that's an option mm-hmm. to go because our parents are always like you have to be yeah. stable you have to have a stable income like mm-hmm. you know, anything mm-hmm. like that and especially in this economic climate it's like totally more important to 
definitely that make, make sure that they have those outlets too mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and kind of teaching them that you know this narrative of the starving artist isn't isn't like real you know what I mean because like we're all fed this this narrative when we enter the creative industry that like you're gonna struggle and you're not gonna be able to find a job and you're not gonna be able to be successful and like you know it's not true and like it there's just you know it's just it's just so ingrained in like society because people don't realize what creativity is I don't think because they don't really associate creativity creativity with a lot of the things that they do daily like watch tv like you watch tv every day right you know and like someone created the show that you're watching and someone has like you know created all the billboards that you see for that show someone's kind of controlling all of the creative process that goes behind you being able to have that luxury and so I think that a lot of people just kind of see that as like something that's there and not kind of realizing that that's like a creative (laughs) a creative outlet and that's just one example of so many things so yeah I definitely think you know kind of switching this narrative from the starving artist kind of like you're saying you know what I mean is really important to kind of teach people that you know creatives are are really important for society to kind of run in general every day awesome do I have any more any more input here now did it free oh it's free I'll be back. Yeah. I'll be back. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, not, not to harp on that point too much, but it feels like a great exploration of, you know, stress testing why in kids, because I feel like the room to fail isn't really mm-hmm. given to a lot. You know, to even be like, all right, well, just, just to harp on if you said that you had created a space for artists to come and show, if there was a youth component of that and there was like mm-hmm. two weeks beforehand, three weeks beforehand, one week, it was like, mm-hmm. you know, go shoot a film with your phone, bring it back, like these mm-hmm. sort of creative parameters. Just to, just to be like, bleh, just to have a bit of exercising a voice mm-hmm. so that you can see like, if I was 12, 13, 15, whatever, and I was stepping into a space and I was like, oh, I made that. And I'm seeing though, here's somebody who's 21, here's somebody who's 25, like only five, six years and they look like me or they look you know like my cousin or they look like this and that. And oh my God, look at what they made. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, just, just to throw that in there. It's um, the exercising, like you said, of education and also of expression. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's such an empowering thing I think mm-hmm. to, as kids are going to be because I, I don't know what's going to happen you know with as you said like arts programs and everything after with mm-hmm. COVID going on definitely yeah I really like that you brought that up and I think that's something that we you know, haven't really spoken about um that really needs to be spoken about because it's it's definitely important to right I mean we gotta sh- right we're trying to figure out our own shit first obviously exactly <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it's like you gotta think deeper and bigger and you know bigger spectrum so like I, def- I definitely really really appreciate you bringing that up and I think that's something you should definitely um incorporate into the space I'll definitely um have some conversations about that Awesome. Okay, so moving on, um, I wanted to talk about, I know uh, Megan already kind of mentioned a resource and shared a resource with us, but I want to talk with everybody else, I guess, about any resources, since we kind of just talked about things that we are seeing gaps in the industry. I want to talk about resources that you have discovered um, within the industry that have been really helpful for you that you can maybe share with everybody else who's here and everybody else who's watching, um, um, especially during this time, whether it be during COVID or before, um, what are some resources that you found, even if it's just in your general niche, um, that have been really helpful for you? YouTube has helped a lot because I like during my major like I started with business because I wanted to do journalism and then that did not work out because it's more like math and I'm like no that's not me so then I had to switch to communication so I think YouTube and like being able to type up like how to like tap into the journalist industry or something like that or whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah YouTube is a great resource this is a very particular niche but since there are like a couple like journalist people in here, there's this uh, website and app called otter.ai and it helps so much when you do an interview because it transcribes some of it for you or like most of it for you. And like, although it still has its issues, you can go in and like edit it and be like, okay, they didn't say that. So it just makes it so much easier. So you're not like just sitting there for hours transcribing. I mean, you're still going to be transcribing it, but at least it's like mostly laid out for you. And then you can just correct what's uh, already there. Or like, yeah, what's wrong? But that's, that's one awesome. for journalists. Super cool. Um, there's been several, like, uh, <laughs> there's several, like, virtual platforms um, that you can do pop-up shops. Um, I can, I forgot the name of them, but I can um, list them once I find the names. But um, there are, like, like different, um, different like websites that you can, you know, post it, different things on. So that's that awesome. Could be helpful. 
there's a my homie tried to put me on it's called clubhouse i guess it's kind of like a, a a forum app where people are just engaged in conversation and like serena williams will be on and the founder of starbucks will be and then just hella people are all kind of in on a conversation uh-huh. i haven't used it much but he's he's on it like every day basically almost like a podcast but it's live because mm-hmm there's a singular conversation and they have experts and people who are coming in and then uh calm the calm app has been hella crucial for me <laughs> um if, if you guys have any sort of routine of self-care too which is really important <laughs> especially as a creative <laughs> right definitely awesome Anyone there's else? also another there's another app that's kind of like the app Matthew recommended. It's uh, Amina, where like you can join like ten thousand like different like type of communities and stuff like that. That's awesome. Super and if people cool. are looking for like jobs or like even just little projects, there's a site which I feel like people probably already know, but it's called ilovecreatives.com, mm-hmm. and they post like every day. They post uh like oh, looking for a graphic designer here, looking for a fashion model here. Like, it's just like a, it's almost like a newspaper layout forum where people can either post themselves and be like, this is what I do. So if you need me, like hit me up or companies can reach out for uh, different creatives as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important and kind of going in that direction, um, you know, obviously like in this, in this time, I think it's, really kind of stressful because a lot of the times you really need like internship experience or experience working under someone before you kind of go and venture off into your own thing. So I wanted to see if you guys had any recommendations in terms of how you've kind of gone about networking to get those internships or networking to get opportunities to kind of work under someone and kind of learn from someone if any of you have, you know, done any of those and um, if you can share any tips in that realm because I definitely think that can be something that's really difficult for young creatives to kind of figure out how to do. Um, so I really like the fact that you mentioned that website, but do you guys have any other ideas or any other things that have worked for you um, in that area? Well, I took a gap year and I literally did so many different jobs that I did some like in the foreign countries and like, I normally just talk to people and like people is like, normally like in Europe, it's mostly through people like that know you and then they tell you about somebody else. And then, you know, like that whole thing. I think that's more like, I feel like the creative industry is much more about connections like any other industry, mm-hmm. but like much more heavily based on it because mm-hmm. you don't really trust the news sometimes, but like, it's okay. Definitely. Yeah. I really agree with that, that it's, it is all about connections. Yeah. I like to say um, that there is on the side, I do like to do like filming and videography with just my family. Um, and mm-hmm. there's like a website called Fiverr, or I think Fiverr, where basically where people do ask if they want like somebody to graphic design something, people go on there like, I'll do your Instagram or your bio for like $5. Um, mm-hmm. But that's the only website I know for that. Um, for like beat makers, because I do make beats, I think it is um and I do also like I said my own music but I do it's all about connections and I do my best to I'm still trying to figure it out you know Mm -hmm. as a um, independent artist but I feel like connections has helped me a lot um so Mm -hmm. far in my journey and um as well as like probably emailing beats here and there with hopes that somebody would get back to me but I'm still in the process of figuring it out so Mm -hmm. with the help of like having meetings like this and being able to Mm -hmm. connect um I think that's the main key is just to be to stay connected and always support other artists so Mm -hmm. definitely and what are some ways that you have kind of found um that have helped you in in the networking aspect like what are some things that have been really useful for you because I know especially I I'm asking this question more for like creatives who are like because there's a lot of them who are more quiet who don't like kind of have social anxiety because I know that that's really an issue and like you guys you know I've mentioned it's so true that this this industry is all about connections it's all about networking and I feel like if you're not able to do that it, it can become really difficult for you to kind of make your way up so um what are some I guess tips that you guys would recommend for someone who is a little bit more soft-spoken or someone who is a little bit more anxious to kind of be in group situations where they can kind of make those connections to kind of you know do so or um, some tips that you would have to kind of make them feel more confident to do to enter these kinds of conversations? Well, I have social anxiety. And one thing that helps me a lot is that knowing that like another person is not going to judge me because mm-hmm. they're more worried about themselves. Because mm-hmm. I know that's like a psychological fact that most mm-hmm. people are, are not looking at you when you're going outside. And like, mm-hmm. even though I totally struggled with that when I was like in high school and middle school, that it like totally made me not want to dress like how I'm dressing now. So I'm like, whatever, not like, just whatever. <laughs> 
that's awesome. Um, I've been like, because that's one of my weaknesses as well. It's just like, mm -hmm. um, like I said, like the virtual thing, like this, like mm -hmm. I just push into like different, um, different things that are different. Like, um, I've attended, attended like a lot of like virtual workshops mm -hmm. where randomly meeting women from all around the world and they're sharing what they do. And so it's kind of like more comfortable, like, you know, talking to them because they, they're in your shoes as well. So I found like a lot of work, like every stylish girl, they just had a workshop, um, create, create and cultivate. Um, so just finding different, different workshops. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. I think digital, um, digital communication is really great for people who are kind of a little bit more nervous to have those in persons and their interactions. Um, and that's something we kind of talked about last week as well, but I definitely think that's a really great tool. And it's kind of nice right now that that's, I mean, obviously there's ups and downs to the situation that we're in right now. Um, I think that that's, a, that's an up is that people who maybe previously were kind of, you know, scared to go out and talk and, you know, kind of have conversations are much, you know, more able and, or more comfortable doing so now because everything is really like, you know, digital and very online. So I mean, I think that's a really great point kind of sticking with that digital and until you kind of gain the confidence to kind of go out and, <laughs> and kind of focus on those in-person interactions is really important. I think something that works for me with that, as I always tell myself, like before I go anywhere where I'm a little nervous, like whether it's at or like a meeting or like one-on-one -on -one with someone that you're never like 110% ready for anything, but you mm -hmm. just have to do it. <laughs> and then like, you never know what can come from it. You know, for example, like being nervous about hopping on this zoom call, like being like, I don't know what this is, but like, you can find like really great opportunities anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to like go with what resonates with you too. And also like being authentic to like, what makes you excited. You're mm -hmm. going to produce something, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anyone else? I just like to add um, that I do agree with everybody on here. Um, I feel like, you know, you just got to take it a step at a time. You know, you, time is all you have and um, just be patient. And no matter what, I mean, you'll get where you want to get with, you know, most definitely with being consistent. And, um, you know, if this is your passion, then I mean, just go for it. I I get nervous as well. And I'm still I'm nervous on the Zoom meeting already. But, you know, you just got to you know, build up the confidence to do it. And like um, many have said, like there's great opportunities out there and you don't want to miss them, you know? So, mm -hmm. and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you have uh, social anxiety, like, um, like I said, just, just take it a step at a time, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, later on, then you'll look back and be like, wow, I was nervous, but I still did it. And, you know, you can be proud of yourself. And that's just another milestone that many have, you know, basically reached. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, that's really great advice. I definitely think that that's so true. And just kind of, you know, kind of going for it. That's something that I've learned to do too, is just to kind of put myself out there and like whatever happens, happens, but at least you can't say you didn't try, you know, it's really important. And a lot of the times <laughs> you'll find that that's kind of, you know, that kind of leads to success. So awesome. All right, guys. And then um, I guess more geared, I know you guys kind of talked about, you know, some recommendations you have for Sada Collective, but I wanted to see if you had any you know, recommendations of specific events that you would like to see us throw um, that would be useful for you guys. Cause we definitely really want to make this, like I said, a space that's yours and a space that you guys kind of cultivate and create. And we're just kind of the ones who are putting it together. So um, are there any specific kinds of events, whether that be digital or in person, when we can kind of move over to in-person events that you guys would find really helpful as creatives? I kind of like this. <laughs> I think this is the cool thing. Um, and I'm really into maybe like, I know when you have that app launch, like checking that out and seeing mm -hmm. like uh, discussion boards or like mood boards mm -hmm. or like project mm -hmm. boards, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That could be cool. Maybe we could do like a virtual like mood board party or something like that. But That'd be really cool. Yeah. And then maybe like, um, I mean, I always like to drink, so maybe we can have <laughs> um, ingredients for a special cocktail that everyone can, you know, make in their home, and we all just you that know, would be so it. fun. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, Where's I like the this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, just a virtual mood board party or, or something. I love that. Yeah, I think this mood board thing is really cool because, you know, I think something that I'm personally missing out on is kind of being around peers and kind of being like, hey, this is my idea. Like, what do you think about it? And what do you have to put, you know, on it? And going back to the collaboration aspect, I think it's really cool when you have people who are there to kind of offer advice or like, hey, like, this is a different creative mind. Like, I think you should do this and kind of incorporating different people's ideas. So I definitely think having a, a space where someone could come and be like, Okay, I just got this like idea for like a project or a business idea or whatever and having you know other creatives kind of come in and be like okay well you should what about this and what about this you know kind of like a class setting I think would be really cool and then kind of putting the mood board together that way um so it just kind of all visually makes sense when you leave it would be really 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 cool would you guys recommend us doing that in more specific groups like like for photographers or for fashion designers or for like specific groups or would you recommend that we do that kind of as like anyone can come and kind of give advice to someone who's yeah. looking for idea it would be interesting to see like everyone come together and do mm -hmm. something different. Everyone has like different points. So mm -hmm. like, it would be pretty cool. Like mm -hmm. do it that way mm -hmm. as well. Definitely. I don't know if, you know, everyone in LA, but maybe we can do like um, a picnic too, where mm -hmm. we can actually, you know, outside. So um, like we can do maybe, do a social distance picnic mm -hmm. <laughs> it could be like painting or something like that or... mm -hmm. I love that yeah or like a paint and sip or something <laughs> kind of incorporating the like the drinking aspect <laughs> that'd be awesome uh, yeah we also just sent out I don't know if you guys are on our email list but we also just sent out an email today and we're actually looking for people to kind of host events with us so I don't know if any of you guys feel like you have some knowledge to give in your specific area um, but we are looking for people to host events right now and kind of Right now we want to do like a paint and stuff so we're looking for someone to kind of lead that we kind of want to give it over to someone and just kind of be the host of it and let you guys kind of take that as yourselves so i definitely think you know a little like niche events would be really cool too and kind of just getting the community involved with each other and because i definitely as much as i love the digital aspect to it i also want there to be an aspect where um you know we're connecting in person and stuff because that's also really important to kind of bring what you're seeing online you know to to real life in front of your face so definitely awesome does anyone else have any more suggestions or well, I feel like you should have some that's like specifically for whatever creative field one person wants to go in and then some for like if they want to be able to collaborate with other people. Mm -hmm, it, definitely. Like, mm -hmm. So kind of more of like a video aspect where we can kind of all talk about, you know, our idea and then also like a chat aspect where we can go in and like reach out to other creatives and ask if they want to collaborate with us just on a specific project. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Um, to do like a um a collab on one big project like that would be awesome mm -hmm. i love that a movie mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um but we're all working towards this one big project mm -hmm. i love that would you think that would be cool if we did it like um like a yearly like sada collective projects that we all come up with an idea for and kind of work on together or how like often would you want to see something like that going on I mean, it depends on whoever, you know, whoever, you know, wants to do it, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I just, sorry to interrupt, like a time capsule mm -hmm. yeah. thing. That's pretty cool. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Some people are, some people are used to like a time frame. So mm -hmm. in three weeks, we need to have this project done. Like we can all, mm -hmm. you know, aim towards mm -hmm. that. Project. But mm -hmm. um, Really thing would be would be ideal too definitely I love that it would be like mm -hmm. know, we're gonna build a house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a house full of art <laughs> that's, <amazing. laughs> that's awesome I really like that cool anyone else Any input? even like some cute outside uh which I guess would be more so like a mingling instead of just like the specific intent is to network but just like even like mm -hmm. an outside poetry read where some people like mm -hmm. uh like people who like uh Tamira like could sell some of their clothes if they wanted to like you know it's like or somebody could come and sell jewelry like mm -hmm. something like that would be uh cool as well mm -hmm. yeah I think this mingling thing um is definitely something that we should I kind of want to start doing that um first 
I would think it'd be really cool to kind of start, you know, this process that we're going into kind of with that um, and then kind of moving over and kind of focusing on other things. But I really like that, um, this idea of like everybody just kind of being together and being able to chat and get to know each other. So that way when you guys move over to the digital online space, you guys are, are more aware of who is who and who does what. And I think that'd be really cool to kind of, you know, again, put the face behind behind the digital profile. Right. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. This has been really productive. I'm really excited to kind of uh, chat with Andrea about all of these ideas and stuff that you guys have kind of mentioned to us. Um, I think it's really cool to just get everybody involved and just to kind of start the series by kind of getting some background on what you guys want to see going forward. Um, so I really think that this space is going to be so amazing for, you know, any creative to kind of enter and kind of be able to network with each other and kind of be able to like have a space to go where you, if you need a resource, whether that be kind of finding someone to, to work on a project with, or even just posting your work that you're working on and asking people for advice, you know, we want this to be a really open space. And um, we kind of call it this uh, inclusive yet exclusive space because we're really focused on obviously letting anyone in who wants to be involved, but we have really strict guidelines in terms of everybody being really open to kind of collab collabing and um, open to sharing resources and stuff. Um, we really want to make this somewhere where people feel comfortable kind of asking their peers for help and stuff. Cause um, I think that's a really big issue in the creative industry in some areas right now is that, you know, a lot of people feel scared to kind of reach out to other people because, you know, whether it's uh, people feel that people are unapproachable or people feel that they're not going to get responses or, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely really um, intimidating to kind of go out there and put yourself out there. So and we want this to be a space where you're comfortable and kind of, like I said, can call home. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining. I really, really, really appreciate it. And um, stay tuned for our Instagram and stuff because we are going to be posting, like I said, um, an up announcement sometime this weekend uh, regarding what next week is going to be. I mean, it's going to be more niche oriented, like I said. But um, we would love if anyone who's doing and working in any creative area can come and join. Like I said, give advice and um, feedback, especially based off of what you guys have told me today. It seems like that's kind of, you know, the way we should be going. So even though the focus is going to be on the work of a specific area, um, we do want, you know, all creatives to kind of come and give feedback. It's definitely going to be a little bit more of you guys kind of chatting with each other and giving each other advice and stuff on projects that you guys are working on. So um, thank you so much. And then, um, like I said, um, you guys all left your stuff down below. So for anybody who's watching, I will definitely share, um, you know, links for everybody's Instagram who's currently joined in here. And um, if you're watching and you weren't able to join this time, no worries. Like I said, we're going to be doing this every single week on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so definitely make sure to go ahead and join. I'm going to put a link down below. We created an event bright where you can kind of um, pick which sessions you're able to attend to basing on or based on your specific uh, calendar. So um, this is going to be going for a while. So you can kind of pick a date for within the next few months um, to kind of see which one, whatever fits your schedule best. Um, so definitely go ahead and do that and just kind of let us know that you're coming. And other than that, um, I hope to see you all soon. Oh, and for anybody else who um, is here and who has not been interviewed for Deconstructing the Narrative, uh, please be sure to send me an email if you guys are interested in that. Um, as much as I love this kind of collaborative situation, I also really think it's important to kind of speak with individual artists about their story and background. Um, so definitely send over an email um, to me at erica at collective.com same goes for anybody who's watching erica at collective.com um, i can also put a link to a type form down below where you can apply um, so we can kind of get those stories shared as well because it's definitely really important and other than that um, we'll see you guys next week and thank you guys all for being here and thank you all for watching and i look forward to next week bye guys bye y'all so it was nice to meet y'all bye, bye. 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 bye.